I'm John. I'll be doing your walkthrough on your uh, uh, vibe here. Uh, you got an electric tongue jack. Up is up, down is down. 2 and 5 16 ball. Right now, the coupler is unlocked. You just got to lift up and push down and in, and that's in the lock position. And then to unlock it, pull up, pull out. Uh, I recommend getting a coupler lock for this. Um, it's good for storage. It's on a tow vehicle, making sure that this coupler is staying engaged on the ball on the tow vehicle. Right here you have your safety breakaway cable. Uh, this is uh, for uh, in case the trailer ever does come disconnected from the tow vehicle, this is going to pull out and it's going to engage the trailer brakes. Uh, recommend getting a uh, carabiner just like this one, uh, 20 or 30 pounds and then hook it onto here and then hook it to the to the tow vehicle separately. A lot of people make the mistake and hook it to the chain, but if the trailer ever comes disconnected and the chain broke, this is gonna be null and void. It's not gonna work for you. So get that carabiner, hook it separately. And then moving on to the chains, you do have two safety chains. Um, I don't recommend crossing these more than once. Um, just cross them, crisscross them once if you feel comfortable doing that and then hook them to the tow vehicle, okay? And then you have your seven pin harness here. Uh, this does the turn signals, parking lights, brake lights. It'll charge the battery while the tow vehicle is on as long as there's a charge wire coming out of the tow vehicle and it'll do the trailer brakes as well. There's a nice little spot right on this side right here. To keep this from dangling down or, or sitting in the elements. Okay, keep the water out of there. Moving on to the propane tanks. Now you can access the top of the tanks just by loosening up these two thumb screws, flipping open the lid, and then get into the tanks. Now you wanna make sure that they're all the way on when you turn them on or all the way off when you shut them off. Now, right here on the front of the, of the tanks is your pressure regulator. Now this is a automatic regulator per se. It can either be set to one tank with this little arrow, set to the other tank with the little arrow or straight down, that's where it becomes automatic. Um, if both tanks are on, it's gonna pull off of one tank till the pressure gets too low and it's gonna automatically switch over to the other tank, taking off of the other tank and you're not having to come out here um, and switch the tanks over. Um, now, sometimes people get um, inline uh, pressure uh, gauges just to know which tank um, has more fluid in it um, to see if it needs to be refilled or not. Now, right behind is the uh, Deep Cycle Marine battery. Um, this is a wet cell battery, which means uh, you can uh, check the, the levels of the water um, if you need to. Um, you're going to refill those levels with um, distilled water only. Um, and you want to stay about a half inch to three quarters of an inch below the top um, when you fill those up. Uh, it's not often that you have to do it. Maybe check it once a year. This right here is a battery disconnect switch. You're going to pull it all the way out. That's going to cut off all 12 volt power when you're storing the unit. Um, just in case you ever forget to, to turn something off um, and... You're, you won't run your battery dry while you're storing it, okay? Uh, to level it, the only thing you really have is this tongue jack, and it's gonna level it front to back. Um, so you can get like a, a four foot level, put it on the floor, and then level this thing front to back. It does have stabilizer jacks. Uh, this unit here has um, electric stabilizer jacks. This side has the manual crank on it just in case anything ever happens where you lose power and you can't get those jacks to come up or down. Um, but those are just to stabilize it, keep the unit from rocking around while you're, while you're uh, camping. Uh, the baggage access, these open up and there's a magnet up top. This is the crank handle for those stabilizer jacks just in case the power ever does go out and you need to manually crank those, okay? Also in here, is a crank handle for the top of the tongue jack in case the power ever goes out on the tongue jack. You're gonna pop this cap off and then this is gonna sit down in there and you'll be able to manually crank that up or down to either get it off the truck or get it onto the truck depending on um, the situation you got going on. Uh, your 50 amp shore cord is in here. Um, it is about 25, 30 feet and that hookup is right there. Um, it just quick connects onto here. Uh, it can only go on one way. This flat silver piece is going to sit right in here. Uh, there's a 
couple pins, plastic pins that go in these two grooves as well. So it's just gonna go in there, little turn, and then there's gonna be a collar on there that you can lock that in place, okay? You just stick a hose in there and fill that up. Uh, the drain for that's on the other side and I'll show you that, but you wanna make sure um, that you do drain that water so you don't get stagnant, uh, mildewy, moldy water. Um, and then if you have to, this is only gonna be for boondocking or dry camping where you don't have hookups. Get to the destination or close to the destination as possible before you fill that water up. Um, water is about eight and a half pounds per gallon. You don't need that extra weight traveling down the road. Over here we have your hot water heater. Uh, this little tab flips over and the door will open up. It is dual element. So right down here you have an on off switch for the electric and then the gas side is inside for the switch for the gas. Um, and you can run both at the same time. It'll speed up the recovery rate. Uh, you only have six gallons of, of hot water. So having both of those, if, if multiple people are taking a shower, having both of those running is gonna help uh, with the recovery and, and keeping up maintaining that hot water. Right here, you have a black tank flush. Uh, what this does is it helps rinse out that black tank. And your black tank's your toilet water. Um, and we'll go over that when we get to the valves. But um, when you, go to run this you want to make sure that that black valve is open when you go to flush it out okay inside here is just a, a shower hot and cold um, and I'll show you how to run the shower inside uh, this one right here is a city water connection this is going to be if you're at a campground hooking up um, to the to the, to the city water with uh, uh, pressure at the, at the pump okay down here is your, all your valves you have two gray tanks and then your one black tank valve back here. So these are now in the closed position. I recommend keeping them closed while you're using it. There is a monitor panel inside to um, see where your tank levels are at. Uh, it, it's, it's very important, especially on the black side because um, the, the toilet water, uh, the solids will stay in the tank and the liquid will leave. So as much liquid as possible that's in that tank, the better. So uh, you first drain that black tank once that's drained out, then you can do your black tank flush. Once you feel that you flushed it enough, then you come over here and it's drained out, close that, and then you can open up your two gray valves. Uh, those are your sinks and your shower water. Um, so it's got some soap in there. It's gonna help rinse out that hose, okay? Right here is your furnace access. Uh, it's also your intake and exhaust for the furnace as well. Um, this gets to about 160, 180 degrees. So uh, anything right here could potentially melt or catch on fire if you have anything leaned up against here. So keep that in mind, all right? You do have a uh, outside uh, satellite port here. This is if you have a portable satellite dish, you can hook that up right there. Okay. Bumper caps pop off. Storage for the sewer hose. Most sewer hoses will fit inside here. Um, some of the more heavier duty ones, because of the, uh, the ends on them are a little bit bigger, they won't. But uh, it's just a way to keep uh, sanitized and, and keep those sewer hoses out of the compartments, okay? Got your spare tire here. You have a cable input when you're at the campground and they have a cable hookup there, as well as a secondary satellite inlet, right? Moving along front and back on those stabilizer jacks. You got a switch for extending them down and retracting them. Now one leg will go down and then the other leg will come down. There's only one one mo drive motor with one drive uh, rod. So uh, right now that one came down and now they're gonna come down and put some more pressure on there. All you can do is put a little pressure on there and that's it. Uh, like I said, these are stabilizers, not levers. Same thing going back up. One's gonna come up before the other one. That's completely normal. This is the same same control as the one on the front. Over oh, here, you have your front stabilizer jacks as well. Okay, same concept as the rear. Now, like I said before, the fresh water tank drain is right here. You're just gonna put this so that it's in line and it's gonna drain that tank, okay? Shut it off, keeps that water inside there. It is solar ready, 
uh, to just trickle charge that battery. Again, these compartments have this magnetic lock. Just open it up and then that compartment stays, okay? Uh, last couple things on the outside here, the awnings. Heavy winds, heavy rain, put them in. Um, these act like big sails and they also catch a lot of water. So just make sure that they are in when it's those conditions. If you're out of tourist, that's different, okay? Now these steps, very important with these steps, they do fold up and they lock into place just like this. You're gonna push the lever over either to the left or to the right, that's gonna unlock it. You're gonna bring these down. Now, before I bring them all the way down, there are these pins that pop out and there's positions um, in the, each leg to readjust it. The reason why is because you wanna make sure that this threshold here is sitting on top of this threshold here. If not, that door will not close properly, okay? All right, so when you first come in from the door, you have your monitor panel, your slide controls, and your awning controls, as well as a couple light switches right here. You got your water pump switch, your water heater on your gas side, your tank heaters, which will um, heat up the tanks in cold weather situations to, to help prevent freezes. Um, it's not a guarantee, uh, especially depending on what the temperature is outside. Plus you have another set of lights and the awning lights as well. Uh, you do have two awnings. There's one on the on the uh, dinette couch slide out, as well as another one up front. Then you have your two slide out controls as well. Um, and then going to the monitor panel, like we discussed on the outside, uh, it'll read your fresh water level, which right now it's at two thirds. Your battery level, which is full. Your black tank right now is empty, and then your two gray tanks. Um, you only have to be concerned with your black, your gray one, and your gray two. Um, as you can see, it says tanks may, may vary by uh, vary by model. Um, so this auxiliary is just um, in a, exactly what that says. It's an auxiliary tank. Um, certain campers have an extra tank where they, they need that panel, okay? Uh, moving off into to the kitchen area here. Uh, your fridge is 12 volt only. It's an Everchill fridge. Um, it takes about four hours to cool off. Now there's a control down here. Um, shows the different levels of temperature. If you're going to be staying somewhere for an extended period of time, I recommend keeping it on three or four to prevent freeze ups on here. As well as the fridge, you have your temperature setting right here. Okay. This cooktop, um, the glass on here is safety glass, but you want to make sure that the cooktop is cooled down before you go and close that. Now to fire these up, uh, there's a little uh, flame sensor there. You're going to line it up with that arrow and then just crank that over and spark it. And that'll light the burners there. Okay. Now on the oven side, uh, down in the back, it might be hard to see on the video, but um, there's a little pilot down there. Same thing. You're going to line up the flame with the arrow, but this time you're going to actually push this in and then you're going to crank it. Uh, I don't know if you can see it where it's sparking there. But that's going to be your pilot. Uh, once it gets lit, like it is right now, you're going to hold it in for about 10, 15 seconds. There's a little thermal coupler on there. It's got to heat up until the gas valve is good to go. If you let go and the flame goes out, just try and relight it. If you let go and it's good to go, you can turn it up and it's going to light that burner. Okay? You do have a light in there and it also lights up the, the knobs or you can just have the knobs lit up. Okay. You do have an overhead fan and an overhead light. Microwave is just a standard household microwave. Nothing special here. There is an outlet underneath the cabinet as well right there. Uh, plenty of storage space. You got your uh, sink strainer as well as the kitchen or the uh, strainer for the uh, the bathroom. Okay, lots of storage. Then on the island side, you got plenty of storage both under the sink and below that area as well. Uh, all the way around, it does pop off. And it also can change from a direct stream out to like a sprayer type as well. Okay. If you 
keys are kind of right there for you. More storage in here as well as a uh, garbage basket. TV does have a travel strap. It's right up underneath. It's just a little quick connect there. So you can pull that. That way you can pull the TV out. You can angle it as well. Okay. Also behind the TV, you do have uh, your cable uh, inlet and then your satellite. So if you have a satellite dish, this is going to be where you're going to hook that satellite dish up to, um, or the, the, the box, and then you're going to go to an HDMI to the TV. Okay. The uh, radio just below, uh, it is Bluetooth, also has a USB port and an HDMI port. Um, now the, the USB port is just going to be for charging of a phone. Power on, you got your different stations, now you do have Two different zones. Zone one is inside, zone two is outside. Okay? And when they're red, they're off. When they're blue, they're on. Uh, this will play a DVD, um, and I believe it does play through to the TV. Um, you can use your surround sound. Now, the fireplace down here, you got your power button. Uh, H is high temp. You can hit the temperature thing again, it'll shut it off just to have ambiance, or you can have low temp, high temp, and then off. Uh, it does color change you got three different colors and then it does have a timer as well up to five hours okay now you do have an emergency exit window back here now this is not for cross ventilation you do not want to open this up because this window could just pop right off the hinge it's what it's designed to do and fall out and break um, but in case of an emergency and you do need to get out you're going to pull this red tab on the screen the screen's going to pop out you're going to lift this and then just push out okay and these shades all retract on their own. You have a power outlet up here. These lights have uh, buttons right in the center to turn them on and off. Plenty of storage throughout on both sides. This couch does go to a bed. I'm gonna pop these cushions off, set them out of the way. This folds up, fold the legs out. You pull it out, drop it down, and then that folds down and becomes a bed. Uh, while I have this down, you can see that this window does open up. You pull this tab out and then slide some window over. Right. You can slide the screen over if you wanted to as well. Just fold it back up, Just pick this back up, fold these in, and then let it sit down, fold the bottom down and in. Okay. There's another emergency exit window to the left as well, and those are just in case of an emergency. Uh, lights up in here, that one's center button, and then these shades go down as well. Uh, these windows here, you're going to pull these two tabs in together and then lift up, and then it'll lock into place. Okay, and then that screen will slide up as well. Then to close it, pull them, drop it down. Uh, these two large windows do not open, uh, but that window on the end opens just as uh, this other side window does. Okay. Light above the dinette, there's a push button there. Uh, the dinette does go to a bed as well. We're going to rock this table top loose. The lights go out of the way and as you can see there's these wood styles on either side that's where the lip is going to sit for this tabletop it's going to sit down there we'll get this cushion up out of the way and then let it sit back down and these cushions are fillers so you just sit down in there and now you have another bed as well so back here you have this bed and then the couch can convert to another bed. Drawers, you have to pull up and then pull out to get these to open. Same with this one. Up and out. 
Um, throughout, you'll see uh, some of these vents. That's if you have the furnace running, those vents are gonna be where that heat's coming out of. Now for the air conditioner, it's either gonna come out um, with these uh, louvers open, or if you close these louvers off, they're gonna come out of these vents up in the ceiling, okay? These all rotate, and you can change the direction of the flow. Now, when you get to your campsite, and it's warm in here, best thing to do, open these up, let all that cold air just dump down into this main area first. Once it cools off, then you can close these off and it'll spread throughout the ceiling, throughout all those different vents, okay? For the heat and the, and the air conditioning are right here for this rear section. Uh, I call it the space bar, you just hit that space bar, it scrolls through. I recommend keeping it on cool high auto. Um, for for uh, AC purposes. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to run on high. Uh, when it gets close to um, its temperature that you have it set to, say you have it set to, to 73 um, or 72 for this matter, um, it's going to kick down the low fan and then um, if it satisfies it's going to shut off. If it needs to call again it's going to kick back up in the high fan until it's satisfied. Like I said you scroll through that space bar It'll go to heat, it'll go to off, and then you got your fan modes just for the uh, air condition, the rooftop air conditioner, but it's just a fan mode, okay? Uh, down here, you have your power distribution center. These are all your 110 breakers and then your 12 volt fuses. Um, as you can see, most of them are 15 amp fuses. Um, you got a couple 30s, a couple 20s, and then these two 15 amp breakers here are resettable breakers. Uh, and then you got one 10 amp fuse. So recommend getting a few of these uh, just so you have them on hand just in case anything happens. Might want to stop it. All right, moving into the bathroom. Uh, you got some storage underneath here. You got more storage here as well. Uh, the toilet is a foot flush. As you can see on the side over here, um, you're gonna push it down part of the way. It'll fill up that bowl and then push it down the rest of the way it empties the bowl. It's not like a house um, style toilet where it's got a tank on the back that every time you flush it, you refill. So you have to refill it yourself. Now the shower door just pulls over and it'll lock in place. If you're inside, you're gonna pull it towards you. Outside, you're gonna push it in and then let it go. Um, it is spring loaded, so keep a hand on that. Um, what I was saying outside is what I wanted to show you on the shower. Um, because you only have six gallons of, of hot water, or if you're working off the fresh water tank you need to conserve water, uh, this is a great option to have. Uh, what you do is you turn your hot and your cold on, get your temperature set, and then rinse off, and then you can flip this valve over, and that's gonna actually stop the flow of water without having to readjust your temperature every time. Uh, so then you can lather up, turn this back on, you'll have your flow, rinse back off, and then repeat, and then once you're done, you can just shut these two valves off. Uh, like I said, you're saving water on the fresh water tank side as well as saving hot water. Okay, so you're not trying to rush through and have, um, you know, a two minute shower as fast as you can, so. Uh, up top here, you do have a venting fan. You can crank that open and turn the, turn the fan on, help get some of that steam out when you're taking a shower, okay? Now, if it is raining, there will there, you can get rain inside if you have that vent lid open all the way. Um, they do make covers, uh, they're called max air covers that you can put on there that will prevent um, any water from getting in, okay? You do have a GFI outlet right here. Um, the yellow light being on means it's good. If it trips for any reason, the yellow light's gonna be off. So then you, what you wanna do is just hit that, that reset, okay? closet over here and the light for that is right above the top there and then you have your, your shade here another emergency exit window same concept you're going to pull that red tab out get the screen out of the way flip this out push the window out on either side of the bed there's one here and there's one over there there's uh 110 outlets as well as usb ports okay you also have storage underneath here uh, I call them the hamper baskets, and then you got your four, um, your four uh, cubicle bins there. Okay. 
plenty of storage. Got closet holders there, my rod holder, and then you got plenty of storage up top. You do have two reading lights as well. There's one there and then one over on the other side with the push button in the center. Uh, the controls for this AC are a little different. Um, you got your control right here for your different fan modes as well as your different cool fan modes. Um, so you're gonna turn that high fan if you wanted it to or high cool. Um, we're gonna shut that off so you can hear what's going on. Uh, but the arrow pointing to the cold here, uh, cold's about 50, 55 degrees. And then if you turn it down to into the red, it's about 75, 80 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, now, these are your returns. They do have filters in them. Same thing with the rear AC. You can pop these down, uh, clean them off with uh, some soap and water, dry them off, and pop them right back in. Okay? Oh, you ready? Yeah. One thing I want to show you right here is this little green light on this switch right here. Now, if you're going to be working off the rooftop antenna, that green light's got to be on. And that goes for this TV as well as the uh, rear TV. So this is your control right here. Uh, if you're going to be working off a cable at a campground, just hit that button. That green light turns off and it'll switch over. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, YouTube's great as well um, for any questions. Um, and then hopefully this video helps you as well. Thanks.